What's up guys? Welcome to Visexualization. Nestor Adiancen here again. Today I have a really nice topic for you and it is calculate modifiers. If you want to master DAX, this is going to be extremely helpful, my friends. So let's get started. For today's tutorial, we have four different points. The first point here is about a calculate modifier. So we're going to learn the concepts here, okay? The first modifier that we're going to be looking into is use relationship. The second modifier is cross filter. And finally, guys, I have a really nice case here where we're going to put everything into practice. So are you ready? Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So what is a calculate modifier? So theory is really important here. Okay. A calculate modifier is a filter argument modifier that changes the way one filter is merged with the original filter context. So please keep that in mind. Okay. So now let's go to the next slide. This is the first modifier that we're going to be learning. Okay. Use relationship. We might have inactive relationships in a model because there are several relationships between two tables, but only one of them can be active, right? Also calculate can activate a relationship during the evaluation of its expression by using this powerful modifier called use relationship. So you guys can see here as well, the syntax of this function use relationship basically has two parts, column name one, and then column name two. So for the first part, it usually represents the many side of the relationship. This is very important as well, okay? And then for column name two, this represents the one side or lookup side of the relationship. Very important concepts, okay? So now let's go to the next slide. So this is the second modifier that we're gonna be learning today, okay? Cross filter. So the behavior is very similar to use relationship. So cross filter basically manipulates the architecture of the relationship in the model. And this function can perform two different operations. It can change the cross filter direction of a relationship or it can disable a relationship, okay? So, we also have right here the syntax cross filter. It has three parts, column name one, column name two, and also direction. So for column name one, the concept is very similar to what we had for use relationship. It represents the many side of relationship. And then for column name two, it represents the one side or lookup side of the relationship. And then for direction, we have three options. It can be one, both, or none. So guys, please keep these concepts in mind. And now let's jump into the next slide. All right, so now this is the time, my friends. So we have here a case, and of course we have two questions. The first question is find the cost amount and the delivery amount in dollars for all claim products since inception. Question number two, find a distinct count of the quality levels for all claim products since inception. So let's jump into Power BI Desktop and start playing with this data, okay? All right, so here we are in Power BI Desktop. I'm gonna share with you guys this information as well, this Power BI report, okay? So you can follow along. Before we get started with the solution, let's take a look at the tables that we have. So we have right here, three different tables. We have the claim table. You guys might be familiar with this data. So we also have right here the dates table or calendar table, it's there. We also have a product table here. We have three columns there, okay? Let's create our DAX measures table, okay? So it's right there. So before we solve the first question, let's take a look at the model here. Okay, so here is the model. So we have our dates table, we have our claims table, and also we have our product table, right? So remember, here we have two relationships between dates and claim, right? So the first relationship is active, is between date and claim date. 
And the other relationship is between date and also delivery date. But this is inactive. Why? Because between two tables, we can have just one active relationship. So that's the reason, okay? And also, between claims and product, here we have the relationship, and it's between product claim and product claim. And it comes from one to many, from product to claim, right? And of course, for dates and claim, so the relationship goes from one to many, one from dates and many for claims. So please keep that in mind. And now let's solve the first question. Let's create our first measure. Right click here, new measure. So our first measure is gonna be called cost amount, okay? And then here we're gonna use sum. Enter and let's see what happens. There you go. We have created our first measure. So let's make a couple of changes here. Let's select the measure and then let's add right here a comma as a thousand separator here. So right here, let's drag into the table. There you go. This is the cost amount, right? So what you're gonna do next here is to find the delivery amount. If we go back to the model, so remember here that the cost amount is based on claim date. How about if we want to learn the cost amount based on delivery date? So that's why we need to activate this relationship, right? In order to do that, let's go back to report right here. And we're going to create our next measure. And here we're going to use the use relationship function. Right click here, new measure. And we're going to call this the liver amount, okay? Here we're going to use calculate, of course, it's right there. And the expression, this is going to be the first measure that we just created, which is cost amount. So now we want to use use relationship because we want to activate the other relationship, right? So use relationship here. It's right there. So if you guys remember here, we need to use the many side of a relationship, right? So for this case, this should be claim and then delivery date because we wanna activate that inactive relationship. So let's do that. And right here, we're gonna select date from the calendar table. So what's happening here? So here, we use use relationship to activate our relationship just for the duration of the calculation. So this function use relationship doesn't change the model. This just affects the measure and that's it. Okay. All right. So let's approve this change, enter, and let's see what happens. And then let's drag this new measure into the table. Boom, there you go. So what's happening here? So here we have the two new columns, right? The first one, this is based on claim date and the second one is based on delivery date. So then the numbers are very similar, but there are some differences. Let's take a look at 2014, for example. So we have about here $40,600 and then the amount based on delivery date is about 41,000, right? So there is a difference there. And if we take a look at another year here, let's say 2018, there is no difference here. But for 2011, for example, there is a $70 difference. So there you guys have it. If you have more than two relationships between two tables, remember that one of them is only active but if we want to active another relationship, we need to use use relationship. And here you have the example. So now we are done with the first question. Let's answer the second question and let's go to cross filter here. So if you guys remember the second question is find a distinct count of quality levels 
for all products claimed since inception. Let's take a look at the model real quick. Actually, data. Okay, so the product table here, if you guys can see, has three columns, category, product claim, and quality. For quality, we have three different levels. We have high level, low level, and mid level. And the question is, find a distinct count of quality levels for all products claimed. So let's go back to the model again. So here we have the relationship, right, between claim and product. And the relationship is based on product claim. But the question is to find the distinct count of quality levels, which is part of product. Because there is already a relationship, this might be a little bit easier. But let's see how it goes, okay? Let's go back to report and let's start playing with this data. So the first thing that we want to do here is the following. Let's create a measure again. Right click, new measure. So this measure is going to be called distinct count of quality levels, okay? And of course, if you guess correctly, we're going to use this thin count here. And this should be product quality, right? There you go. Perfect. And if you want, you can also uh, right here, a comma, I say thousand separator. All right. So now let's do this. So let's use right here cost amount as a reference. Okay. And then right here we're going to use the next measure here. See, this didn't count of quality levels. So what's happening there? Something is wrong. So remember here, we have three different quality levels, right? And that's what's happening here. For every single year, we have basically the total number of quality levels, but that might not be the right answer. So that's why we need to create a new measure and we're going to use cross filter. So let's see how it works. Right click right here, new measure. And we're gonna call this cross filter. And of course, we're gonna use calculate here again. And we're gonna use also our previous measure, which is this thin count. There you go. And here we're gonna use cross filter. There it is. If you guys remember, this function has three parts. So the left column name. This should be the column that belongs to the many side of a relationship. And for this particular case, we're going to use claim, product claim, right? And then this should be the one side of a relationship. It should be product, and table, and then product claim. Third piece of this function, here we have three options. And for this particular case, we need to use both, okay? And then let's approve this change and let's see what happens. Enter. There you go. It seems like this is working. So before we drag this measure into the table, let's go back to the model real quick. Okay, so briefly here. Here, in order to filter or slice columns or fields, remember that we need to use the one side of relationship. If we use the many side of relationship, we might have some mistakes. So if you guys can see here, we're using date or year from the dates table and it's going from one to many. So this is perfectly fine. And then when we want to find the quality levels, right? So if you guys can see, it's going from many to one, many for claim and one from Prague. So the relationship or when we are trying to filter, the filter is not working properly because it should go from one too many all the time. So in order to fix that issue, that's why we are using cross filter. And our goal here is to make this relationship many to many, just for the duration of the calculation. So once we do that, so we can definitely find that this thin count for quality levels. So that's basically the concept, okay? So now let's go back to our report. So this is the report, remember that we just created our measure here, cross filter, let's drag this into the table and let's see what happens. Now we see a more accurate calculation. So now let's take a quick look at the results. For 2013, for example, 
we have two quality levels. And then for 2018, the same story here. So now let's double check it. So that's why we have right here a slicer. So let's like just 2010. There you go. And now how about if we go to product here and let's drag quality into the table. So what's happening here for 2010, we have right here only two quality levels for 2010. We have high level and low level. So for mid level, we didn't have products claim for that level. And that's why cross filter is very helpful. I think that's it, my friends. Let's go back to our presentation real quick. All right, guys, that was it. I hope you found this content very helpful. If so, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss anything. Thank you, guys, and see you in my next tutorial.